I'm constantly speaking, I'm constantly conveying my message, even if it's front of, in front of a mirror or I'm driving by myself, I'm talking through my points to see if they're clear to me, to where they become second nature. Um, I always say the key to timing is preparation. I work at being prepared at all times, and a lot of this comes from my own development. I'm able to uh, convey messages very quickly and concisely, typically because there's stuff that I'm working on and there's things that's very clear in my mind, so I don't have to do a lot of extra preparation in that sense, but practice, practice, practice. The more you do it, the more comfortable you'll get doing it. That's a great question. There's a lot of guys that I really enjoy. I think. Um, my favorite is likely going to be Tony Robbins, which is probably everybody's. He's a master. Uh, I like to just listen to him and, and pay attention to his cues and, and how it is he communicates. But what he's doing is very authentic. Um, it's not very canned. It's just who he is. But I think he's a, a fantastic public speaker and he's very good at com creating a compelling message that people want to hear. Well, the first thing you got to do anytime you're preparing for any speech is you need to consider who your audience is. Uh, very, very important because you want to make sure you're using vernacular uh, that they're going to understand. You're going to use words and phrases that are relevant to who your, your audience is or you're going to lose them. Um, the next thing is we use an acronym to help prepare that really helps called KDF. And that's know, do, feel. What do you want people to know? How do you, what do you want them to do and how do you want them to feel? All three points are important and very often we'll focus on one and not the other. Uh, typically we get so focused on what we want people to know that we forget that there's a call to action or that it's important that how we make them feel um, gets in there because if they don't feel right about what you're saying, they don't like you as a speaker, they're going to get turned off to what it is you're saying and you're going to be ineffective. So taking all three into consideration, what do you want them to know? Um, what do you want them to do? How do you want to make them feel? Will really help you get prepared and make sure you're conveying a message that's going to be optimal. Yeah, so number one, obviously, is be prepared. Know what it is that you're there to do. We talked about the know, do, feel, uh, public speaking. Um, but beyond that, when you get up on stage, command a presence. And a lot of that has to do with your body language, how you hold yourself, how you project your voice. Obviously, before you get on stage, you want to warm up your voice, make sure that you're loose, that you can project it. Um, you want to make sure that your body language is warm and inviting, um, that you're confident, and that shows up in the way that you speak. Uh, and it's really important that you're authentic. Be you. Don't, don't throw away your notes. If you're, if you're really prepared, you don't need notes. You can, you can come from an authentic place and still deliver the same content, uh, but that comes back to the preparation piece. So I'm going to say a couple of things. Just command a presence. Make sure you project your voice um, and, and make sure you're authentically you and you're delivering content that has been well prepared. I almost always pretend like I'm talking to one person. And, and that helps me a lot. And I, I think about who in my life needs this message? Who in my life would benefit from what I have to share? And so that comes across in the way that I speak. Um, there's a certain authenticity to it and an integrity in what I'm saying because my message is very heartfelt and it's I'm thinking about this person. Obviously, in, you know, speaking to thousands of people at a time, but in my mind, especially when I can't see anybody's faces, I'm thinking of the one person that needs to hear that message. The most important thing that you do and the hardest thing to do is to go back and listen and watch and pay attention to your speech. No matter how good it was or how horrible it was, take the time to go back. And I know for me, for one, listening to myself speak still is like, ugh. I don't know why, but it drives me nuts. But I do, I go back and I listen, I pay attention. Oh, I should have said that clearer. Or, why didn't I hammer that point home a little bit harder? Or why was my body language off there? Or, hey, that was really good. That seemed to be really effective. The crowd really liked that. But I'm, I'm first of all gonna look at the tape. The tape's gonna tell me a lot about how well I did and where I can improve. Um, it's okay to lose, just don't lose the lesson. Every opportunity to speak is an opportunity to get better if you take the time to go back and look at it and figure out what you could have done better. The second thing I do is I ask for feedback, candid feedback in a number of different ways. Um, and then I, I'll spot check my work by going back and go, hey, what, what do you think I was trying to get people to do there? Or what was, how was I trying to make people feel? Or you know, what was the message that I was trying to deliver to see if, if they picked it up? Um, and if I'm way off or they're like talking about something I wasn't even thinking about, I'm like, okay, wow, I got some work to do here. I just didn't really get delivered the way I wanted to.